Global Parts Properties. Square Takeoff has the ability to create custom properties for each of the part types. These properties will appear on all parts that you create from then on forward. They can be removed from or added to. Let's take a look at the global parts properties for material. As we can see, we have area value, count value, linear value. All of these properties will appear every time a material is created. You can set default formulas and or values. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. As you can see, the cost total is a type of number. Its grouping structure is estimating and its formula is quantity times cost each. To create a new global parts property in each one of the part types, you would hit the plus sign next to the line item of the part type. Here, you would fill out all the necessary information for the property's data, name, description. You would select the type of control you wish to display the property in, whether it's a yes, no, uh, checkbox, list, memo, number, or text. You would also select the grouping structure, whether it's an estimating takeoff or work breakdown. And if it requires a formula, you can select our formula builder to build the formula for this property. If it's not a property data and just an inputs field, you would select the inputs tab. You would check allow input, select the default unit of measure. And if it's a numerical input, you can add the decimal places. If it's a list of items which you want to select from when you're doing your estimating, you would have to select list from the type and then go to your list tab and enter in the list of items, one beneath the other. And that was global parts properties. Parts catalog. Square Takeoff comes with a default Square Takeoff parts database. You can create your own parts catalog or you can use ours or a combination of both. Let's take a look at the Square Takeoff parts database. As we can see here, the Square Takeoff parts database is broken down by CSI division. As we drop down in CSI division six, we can see how we have the wood framing floor materials, wood framing beam plates, wall framing materials, and so on and so forth. As we dig a little deeper, we can see under wall framing material, we have mud steel plates accessories, and we can continue to drop down, and we can see the three one half by 50 sill sealers. Um, these parts can be edited, uh, deleted, or we can duplicate them and edit them. As we can see in the properties, we have the part type of which can be created, equipment, labor, material, or other. Uh, we select a part name as well as a description. As we go into properties, we can also add a part number. CSI division can be selected as well as a default color when you're doing your estimating. As we look at our properties group, we can drop down into estimating and then we can see the global parts properties that come in by default and they can be edited and changed at this point. To edit them, we can select the edit button and we can modify the properties data. If we wish to remove them, we can hit the delete button. So if I select edit on the quantities item, 
I can take a look at its formula and modify it if needed. In the Square Takeoff Formula Builder, as you can see on the right hand side, we have the list of properties that exist in the part which can be used in your formulation, as well as the Functions and Operators tab, which gives you all the mathematical operations, whether it's the round down, round up, square root, pi, parentheses for orders of operation, addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. If we take a look at the formula for quantity in the sill sealer, we can see that it's a roundup and it grabs the linear value divided by 50 multiplied by the waste percentage, which is a property in the current part, and we add 100 and divide it by 100. To create a new parts catalog, I would select the Add New Catalog. For this example, I will call this Demo Parts Catalog. And click Save. As you can see, the number of parts in my new parts catalog is zero. If I wish to edit the name of this, I would hit the Edit button. If I wish to add parts to my new parts catalog, I would hit the plus symbol. This will give me the option to create a folder or create a part. In this case, I want to create a part. And I wish to create a new material and I will call it a drywall. one half four by eight. And I can copy and paste this as my description as well and select save. After selecting save, I get the properties button. This will then allow me to add further properties into this new part, including a part number if it's available, a CSI division of which I can select, and the default color. And then as we see here, we have our default global parts properties. By selecting the edit button, off the quantity properties in the list. I will then select the X2 button to create my formula. For my formula, I'm going to select the roundup operation. Then I will add a parentheses, open parentheses, select one of my properties, Divide that by 32. I'm going to pl close the parentheses. And then I'm going to add my waste by multiplying. I open parentheses. Waste percentage. I'm going to add 100 to it. I'm going to close the parentheses and divide all of that by 100. Close parentheses again. And this is my formula for the quantities. Save and then select save again. And we can see the formula now appears on my list of properties. Template user groups. Template user groups are used to allow users that are associated with your account to access certain templates. In this case, you can create a new group by selecting the add new group. But for the sake of the example, let's look at custom templates. To edit it, you select the edit button. To delete it, you select the delete button. Let's look at the properties for this custom template. As you can see, the group name 
is custom templates. This can be modified or created. You then have a drop down to select users. You can add users or remove users that are associated with your account. You would click save and that was template user groups. Now let's create templates. To create a new template, you can select the add new template button. You would then enter a template name. If there is a manufacturer associated with this template, you can select a manufacturer. For this demo, I will select general. You can then associate an icon with your templates and you can also select a color. Here is where you associate your users with your template. As you can see, we can see the custom templates group, which was created in the previous example. And I would select save. That is how you create a new template. You can also duplicate existing templates and modify them by selecting the duplicate button. Or if you just wish to edit by selecting the edit button. Now that the template is created, we need to add assemblies to it. You can do this by selecting the plus button. You will select assembly and we're gonna select a linear assembly. And we're gonna say this is a two by four exterior. wall framing. This will be a standard linear. We can also select the custom color, a default width and then hit start. Now we can see that my two by four exterior wall framing is created. If we select the edit button, we can modify any of the items that we added to it and select update. We can also, we can also duplicate this assembly, but what we want to do is start adding parts to this assembly. By clicking the plus sign, we can then select the parts. And the part we are adding will be a material. By selecting a part name and typing, the system will automatically bring forward anything that matches what you are typing in the parts catalog, whether it's a custom parts catalog or the square takeoff parts catalog. As we can see, the drywall part that was created in an earlier example is selected and highlighted right now. You will then select save. After selecting save, you can now also, if you wish, customize any of the properties in here. However, by customizing it here, um, it will not affect your parts at a global scale. To do that, you will need to edit your properties in the parts catalog itself. If you edit it here, it will only edit it for your current template and your current part. Now, as we continue to build this assembly, we're going to add another part to it by selecting the plus sign and selecting part. This part type is of material and I wish to add a two by four by 16. And we want a treated bottom plate.
I will then select save and close. I will then go ahead and add another part by selecting the plus sign and selecting part. This will be a part of materials and I will select a two by four by eight. And let's add uh, wood framing studs and select save and close. And I will continue doing this to build my assembly. And I will select my top plate and save and close. And another materials seven by sixteenth. And let's add some of this so let's be wash using. And hit save and close. And this is how we build our assemblies. Now that we've gone ahead and built our estimating templates, let's go ahead and go to our blueprint and calculate the material. I will do this by selecting the project, going to start takeoff. I will select the first floor plan. And as we can see, we have now a template tab, which I will select. Here, it will have a drop down of template groups. And I will select my custom templates. Here, you can see the demo template that was created. And here we have the 2x4 exterior wall framing. I will click the green arrow. And I will start. This will give me a list of properties which I can now enter um, based on the variables and, and the options which were customized. But I'm just going to head and accept the default. And now I'll start calculating my exterior wall. Now that our takeoff is done, I will hit the stop button and then I can select the estimate button. This will generate the report and I can expand this report by selecting the arrows and here it shows me all the quantity of the material that's required. If you wish to export to Excel, you can select the export to Excel button. And now we have done our first estimate. Thank you for watching Getting Started with Estimating.